so this is the second part of the intestinal protozoan infections so as i have talked earlier that the second part will be about the life cycle of the antimoeba histolytica giardia lamblia and the uh, uh, you know the opportunistic cochidian protozoans so here is the video and we will talk about the life cycle of all of them in a single page so talk uh, in a table wise manner so that it can be in your minds for a longer duration so i have written here the interviva histolytica uh, giardia lamblia and these are the cryptosporidium parvum cyclospora and the cystoisospora belly now coming to the features so the first point is about the host what is the host for interviva histolytica it is a single host and the host is human in case of giardia lamblia it is single host and again it is human in case of this cochidian parasites again it is single host and it is human now coming to the infective form so the infective form in case of the antimoeba histolytica is the quadrinucleated cyst similarly for giardia lamblia it is quadrinucleated cyst you must have seen the diagrams i uh, had drawn in my uh, previous lecture the just you just remember those diagrams there were four nucleus so that's why it, these are quadrinucleated cysts in both antibiostolytica as well as in the giardia lamblia also there were four nucleus that means it has got uh, it is a quadrinucleated cyst in those cysts of this uh, giardia lamblia and the antibiostolytica so the infective form will be the quadrinucleated cyst and if you remember the cyst that i had drawn for the parvum cyclospora and the cystoisospora then those cysts were sporulated oocysts okay the sporulated oocysts so those are also the infective form in case of this cochidian parasites next is the mode of transmission so mode of transmission is simple for all of them the mode of transmission is the fecal oral route and contam that is the contaminated food and water is the route of infection the fecal oral route contaminated food and water and here also fecal oral route contaminated food and water so everything is same in all of them everything everything is same in all of them just the difference is in the sporulated oocyst that here the uh, infective form is sporulated oocyst while in all other uh, protozoans that is in case of histolytica lamblia the infective form is the quadrinucleated cyst okay but the host the mode of transmission everything is same in all of them so this is this uh, now becomes very easy for you to remember now coming to the life cycle proper about the parasites the first point is the excystation the first point is the excystation what is the meaning of excystation so whenever the cyst is ingested you have seen here that the infective form is quadrinucleated cyst what is the meaning of infective form infective form means that form is ingested in the body okay that means the quadrinucleated cyst gets ingested and once that quadrinucleated cyst gets ingested that means uh, the cyst has its cyst wall as well so that cyst wall has to be removed for the content to come out in the intestinal lumen so that is called as the excystation when that cyst wall is removed and the content of that cyst comes out into the lumen that is called as excystation so once the excystation occurs what will be released please uh, use your mind so what will be re released what will be released so four small trophozoites will be released in the small intestine why why four small trophozoites because there were four nuclei use your mind now there were four uh, nuclei in in that cyst that means if there are four nuclei each nuclei will develop into the spore uh, trophozoite each nuclei will develop in the trophozoite isn't it that means four small trophozoites are released into the small intestine similarly in case of giardia lamblia two sporozoites are released in the duodenum here two uh, trophozoites are released in the duodenum okay this is a uh, you know confusing part but you should remember that the here two trophozoites are released in case of giardia lamblia and again in case of the uh, cochidian parasites four sporozoites are released into the small intestine next comes the multiplication part so once it has released 
the trophozoites has been released into the intestine it has to be multiplying so that to increase their number into the lumen so the trophozoites multiply by the binary fission the trophozoites multiply by the binary fission okay and after multiplication they have to colonize so they colonize on the intestinal mucosa they colonize on the intestinal mucosa so once they colonize they cause dysentery that is dysentery means the the diarrhea with blood so they cause once they colonize they cause dysentery and along with that there occurs shedding of the trophozoites as well that means it indicates what that means in it indicates active disease if the trophozoites are getting shedded along with the stool in the dysentery that means the disease is active that uh, trophozoites uh, are multiplying in the lumen and they are causing this dysentery okay so this shedding of trophozoites indicate that the disease is active and also when they colonize they cause invasive amoebiasis invasive amoebiasis means extra intestinal amoebiasis extra intestinal amoebiasis lecture has already been uh, uh, you know uploaded on the lecture in the hepatobiliary system uh, playlist so you must watch that extra intestinal amoebiasis that again becomes a very important question for the university exams so the colonization also leads to invasive amoebiasis along with the dysentery so dysentery is the most important part along uh, and uh, leaving dysentery other thing that it causes is the invasive amoebiasis or the extra intestinal amoebiasis but in case of giardial amblia it only causes dysentery but it does not cause dysentery this should not be dysentery it should be diarrhea okay it should be diarrhea because it does not uh, causes blood in the stool it only causes the diarrhea so here also there occurs shedding of the trophozoid in the feces so giardial amblia also causes that same we will see the parvum later on because it is a slightly different life cycle uh, of the cochidian parasites uh, next what we have is the incestation what is the incestation means incestation means again the formation of the cyst wall so that the cyst can be released in released and passed in the urine uh, sorry in the stool so incestation occurs incestation means formation of the cyst wall that means the trophozoites transform into cyst in the large intestine now this process occurs in the large intestine but uh, in case of giardia lamblia the cyst formation occurs in the jejunum why the jejunum see here the release was where release was in the duodenum that's why the cyst is formation uh, cyst formation is occurring in the jejunum but if we talk about the histolytica the trophozoites were released in the small intestine that's why the uh, that's why the uh, cyst formation is occurring in the large intestine because after large after since small intestine large intestine comes and uh, why is then jejunum is the site for the formation of cyst in case of giardia lamblia that is because after duodenum the next is uh, next part of the small intestine is jejunum that's why the uh, uh, cyst formation in case of giardia lamblia is occurring in the jejunum okay very simple now if the trophozoites are uh, and then uh, the cyst formation occurs in the large intestine and then the trophozoites are released into the stool and these cysts never if the cysts are uh, never formed if the trophozoites themselves get released without formation of the cyst then they will never get converted into the cyst in the soil and they will get disintegrated so only if the cyst itself get released into the stool then that will survive into the external environment if trophozoite gets released into the environment that will get destroyed okay that's why it is written here and this cyst then again contaminate any food and will again continue the cycle so this is the whole cycle of the entamoeba histolytica now coming to the giardia lamblia here also the trophozoites gets uh, converted into the cysts in the jejunum and then gets released into the stool into the external environment then again contaminate the uh, food and after contamination someone eats that food and then gets the infection with the giardia lamblia so the, thus the cysts continue the cycle so so uh, in this way we complete the life cycle of the histolytica and the 
GIDL amblyanna. Now coming to the coccidian parasites, the life cycle of the coccidian parasites. So here with the X station, four sporozoites were released into the small intestine. Then here uh, multiplication colonization, these all does not happen. These all do not happen. Rather, here occurs invasion. What is the invasion? The sporozoites invade into the epithelial cells and lie inside the parasitophorous vacuole so if this is a epithelial cell then they enter inside the epithelial cells and they form a vacuole inside the epithelial cells okay they form a vacuole inside the epithelial cells like this they form a vacuole that vacuole is called as parasitophorous vacuole okay and they remain in that parasitophorous vacuole a parasitophorous vacuole then there occurs schizogony what is schizogony in schizogony the sporozoites transform into the trophozoite okay the sporozoites just shape changes the sporozoites get transformed into the trophozoites and then there occurs asexual multiplication and there is formation of merozoites then occurs gametogony okay so what is what happens in the gametogony in the gametogony the mer merozoites converted into the microgametes or the macrogametes and the next step is the sporogony where fertilization occurs between the micro and the macrogamete zygote is formed and thick walled oocyst is formed then sporogony occurs and four sporozoites are formed within the oocyst and this sporulated oocyst is released in the feces then sporulated oocyst is released in the feces that is the whole uh, life cycle in case of the coccidian parasites now this is sporulated oocyst again uh, uh, that has released in the feces will again contaminate the food and through the contaminated food the sporulated oocyst enter inside the gut and that will again release four sporozoites here and again invasion again schizogony gametogony sporoga and this cycle will continue okay so this is the whole cycle of the life cycle of the histolytica thamlia and the coccidian parasites in a single piece this is very easy to remember if you uh, write and practice this whole table two or three times then it will be uh, printed in your mind and you can easily remember this life cycle as well okay life cycle of GRDA, uh, GRDA lamblia and the entire parasitica is important for the exam point of view but you can leave this part of uh, cryptosporidium parvum cyclospora and cystoisospora that these are not so much important for the university exams but yes histolytica and the lamblia these two protozoans are important this life cycle of these two protozoans are important life diagnosis of these two protozoans are important from exam point of view okay that's all for the second part of the video or second part of the intestinal protozoal infection video in the third part we will discuss the lab diagnosis of these three protozoans